Hello and welcome back. Here's your next lesson on adding and subtracting fractions. Now one of the things that you're going to have to do when you're adding or subtracting fractions with unlike denominators, now today the focus is going to be on unlike denominators. One of the most crucial steps when you're changing the fractions around is that you have to be able to make equivalent fractions. Six was not the denominator we needed. We needed 30. This is just an example. If the denominator changes, then this fraction has to change. That's just how it is. So how many times does 6 factor into 30? And 6 factors into 30 5 times, times 5. So we will do the same thing with the 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So this is a crucial, crucial step. Very, very important when you're adding or subtracting fractions with unlike denominators to make sure that you are changing the entire fraction. If the denominator changes, for instance, 6 is changing into 30, then the numerator has to change along with it by the same factor. Okay, so why don't we just go into some examples here and just try these out just for uh, good luck here. Let's make sure that these are doable and you can figure them out. Okay, so let's look at this first example right here. We have 3 and 9. I'm always looking at where there's already two numbers. So what factor does 3 divide into 9? Well, it goes by itself. 3 times 3 is 9. We'll do the same thing with 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 thirds equals 4 ninths. There we go. Moving along to this one. How many times does 4 factor into 16? And that would be by a factor of itself. So 4 times 4 is 16. Therefore, we're going to multiply the 3 by 4. There you got it. 3 times 4 is 12. So 3 fourths, 3 quarters equals 12 sixteenths. There it is. Okay, the next one. How many times does 7 factor into 42? 7 times 6 is 42. Therefore, we're going to do times 6 up here. 1 times 6 is 6. And for this last example right here, how many times does 10 factor into 60? 60 divided by 10 is 6. 10 times 6, that's your multiplying factor. And we're going to do the same thing times 8. 8 times 6 is 48. There you have it. Like I was saying, this entire process of changing the fraction into an equivalent fraction. Now remember, equivalent means equal. We're making equal fractions. We're not changing the value. 3 fourths still equals 12 sixteenths. Those are equal to each other. 1 seventh equals 6 over 42. Those are definitely equal to each other. So we're, we're just changing the fraction around. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into our first problem. Now I've gone ahead and wrote down the steps. You may want to pause the video at this moment, which you should do anyway, and write down the steps. Find the LCD, revise the numerators, add or subtract. I should preface that by saying it could be subtraction as well. And then simplify. Your last step is to get that fraction into lowest term, or if it's improper, change it to a mixed number. So let's go ahead and jump into our first problem here. The very first step when you add or subtract fractions with unlike denominators is to find the least common denominator. D stands for denominator. This is no different than finding the LCM. So the LCM of 12 and 6 is 12. So how did I get that so quickly? Well, we just finished with LCM, so this is going to be something that you're going to be expected to know how to do. But if you list the multiples of 12, which is 12, 24, 36, 48, so on, they go on forever, and the multiples of 6, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and those go on forever as well. You notice that both lists have a 12 in it. That's your LCM, which is the same as your LCD. Let's go ahead and change the fractions. Go ahead and look at the multiplying factor here. How many times is 12 multiply into 12? Well, that's a pretty simple question that multiplies into itself once. That's going to be our multiplying factor for 5. 5 times 1 is 5. So as you can see, this fraction right here didn't change. 5 twelfths still equals 5 twelfths. Nothing changed. Why didn't anything change? Because the denominator stayed the same. Here, however, with 2 6, we're changing the denominator from a 6 into a 12. Therefore, fraction should change. How many times is 6 factor into 12? Well, 2 times. So that's going to be our multiplying factor down here. So 2 times 2 is 4. So now, your ultimate goal is to get the fractions to look like this. 5 twelfths plus 4 twelfths. Go ahead and add that up. 5 plus 4 is 9, and 12 plus 12 is 24, right? Eh, wrong. Never, never add denominators, ever. Never, never, never. Never add them. Don't. Or you might see this guy in your nightmares. Please, I beg you. Don't add them. Okay, that ends this public service announcement. Back with our 
regular scheduled program. Okay, 9 24ths. Okay, that was totally wrong. We're not going to... We do, however, add the 5 and the 4. 5 and 4 makes 9. 12 and 12 stays 12. 9 twelfths. Okay, now this next step, let's go ahead and simplify. So we're at the last step right here. Simplify. So what number can 9 and 12 both divide by? I think 3 would work. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And that is all. 3 fourths is our answer. Okay, let's go ahead and go through these examples as well and see how these are done. All right, so we have 6 and we have 9 and we're looking for an LCM. Don't do the factor. Do multiples. LCM and LCD are the same thing. So if I were to list multiples of 6, I get 6, 12, 6 times 3 is 18, times 4 is 24. These are multiples because it takes multiplication to get them. Those are multiples. They go on and on forever and ever. Multiples of 9, 9 times 1, 9 times 2, 9 times 3, 9 times 4, 9 times 5, and 9 times 6. And okay, so what's our LCD? Looks like it's 18. 18 is a number that is in both lists. So I'm going to put 18 here. There you have it. Okay, now let's look at our multiplying factor. Now in both instances, the denominators are changing. The 6 is turning into an 18. This 9 is turning into an 18. So in both instances, in both fractions, the fractions should change. 1 6 will change into an entirely different fraction. 5 ninths will change into an entirely different fraction. However, I should be careful about saying different. It's not different in terms of what it equals. It's just different in the way it looks. 1 half, as you already know, 1 half can take a lot of different look. It can be 4 eighths. 1 half could be 17 over 34. 1 half can be 119 over 238. These, no matter how I write them, all ultimately equal 1 half. Okay, so our multiplying factor for 9 is 2. 9 times 2 is 18. That's where you're going to multiply the 5 by, and you get a 10. Our multiplying factor for 6 is 3, and then we multiply that, the 1, by 3, and we get 3. Okay, so when we do this, we get 3 plus 10. 3 plus 10 is 13, and 18 plus 18 is 36. Right? Wrong, 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 wrong. Don't ever do that. Never add denominators. Never subtract them. Never, never 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 add them okay you understand me never add them or these people in this little this really cute cat here will come back to haunt you in your dreams they will never add them did you get that message let me say it again <laughs> never 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 add denominators don't ever do that never did i say that enough no i didn't never add denominators I'm going to say that again and again until it haunts you in your dreams forever. Okay, and back to our regularly scheduled program. This is wrong. Partly right. 3 plus 10 is 13. That was right. But you do not add denominators. Never do that. There you go. 13, 18. And that's our answer. That's in simplest form. Nothing else can be done to it. All right, now, now on to our second example here. We have denominators of 15 and 10. Notice how I'm focusing on those numbers first. We're focused, all of our focus is on that. What number does 15 and 10 both go into? What can they both divide into? Multiples, right? We're looking for multiples. And if you th are thinking 30, then you are right. 30 is a multiple of 15, and 30 is a multiple of 10. Now let's look at our multiplying factor. 10 times 3 is 30, and that's what we multiply on top. 4 times 3 is 12. There you have it. What's our multiplying factor here? 2. Sorry, this is getting a little messy. And then 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 12 is 18. And 30 plus 30? No, 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 nope, nope, not so fast. Don't add them. Never do that. 18 thirtieths. And can that reduce? Hmm, I think it does. We can reduce that by 6. So 18 divided by 6 and 30 divided by 6. When you do that, you get 3 tenths. There's your answer, folks. Right here, I have a couple examples, and I'm not going to talk through them like I did with the previous examples, but I will go through them. But why don't you stop the video at this moment, write these down, try these out on your own, and then hit play to check your work. Remember, try to be honest. You're only cheating yourself if you're watching me do the work. Try it on your own and hit play to see how they go.
Okay, that does it for this flip lesson. Now, I went through some examples here, but you this is probably going to take you a little bit of time to understand, and you're going to you're going to need to practice these. Make sure you do these right. Don't practice doing these the wrong way. Otherwise, you learn it the wrong way. Very important to learn how to do this. Everyone have a great night. See you tomorrow.